Okay, let's get right to the first one. This is what I woke up to Thursday on, on that bad day video that I did. Okay, so Jim Jones says, I think the prices are BS. They're not that expensive. And you specifically bought expensive stuff, didn't you? Five dollars for two paper towels? You are BSing. So people will think everything there is that way. Phony baloney info. What budget-minded people spend five bucks on paper towels? You're full of crap, along with your channel, trying to discourage people coming there. You idiot. Nice try, something or other. Okay, that was a nice good morning. I get these. Um, the idiot is somebody who's calling somebody out, calling him a liar when he doesn't have a clue of what he's talking about. So let's go to this clip that I did today. Okay, here you go. On special, two kinds of Scott. There's the price. I don't lie, I don't make this stuff up. Here we are, this is Super Maxi. So despite your choice words, you're looking like a fool. Here's a single I'm not gonna act try and make it on sale. Even. Normal price, by now. $5.39. On sale price, $3.31. I'm not gonna try and make it all even, even though I know how. So that was for you. I need paper towels, I'm sorry. I wish they were a dollar a roll, but they're not. And that's the point. Some things are very cheap, some things are very expensive. The information most people get on these videos or online is all the good things, all the positive things. Everything is peaches and cream. But everything isn't peaches and cream. It's not peaches and cream anywhere. Every place has its positive, has its negatives. I've said this before. My goal with these videos is to give you the truth. I show you beautiful sites. I show you wonderful restaurants. I show you lots of good things. But I also show you the things that I know will shock you. And paying $6.50 on sale for two rolls of paper towels is ridiculous. But guess what? That's what it is. So if you're coming here, understand. Either you figure out something else, you cloth, use cloth towels, wash them, or you're going to pay that. That's just the way it is. It's the truth. And that's the whole point. So he says that I'm lying, but I'm not lying. Now, item number two. I got several comments on the video, the last video I did, that had a very depressed looking picture. I spoke for a moment about, you know, de depressed. I spoke a moment about people getting depressed. First of all, the thing about depression is it doesn't have to be some big, gigantic, cataclysmic problem for somebody to become depressed. Depression is, is a chemical process in the brain, and if they could will their way out of it, they would do it. What I had wasn't really depression. What I had was just a bad day. And I was trying to make light of it. I realized my humor is not very good. I realized that I'm quite dry in my humor. I did make the comment that here I am talking about, you know, the shower and the lights went out when I escaped death two years ago from cancer, where everybody thought I was going to die. And, and miraculously, I'm healed. So I put it in perspective, and I also made that crazy, funny little video at the end that I did it to humor myself. So it was kind of tongue-in-cheek, that video, but it had a point, it had a message. There are people that are going to come here and they think that by changing the scenery and coming to a place that in their mind is paradise on earth, that all their problems are gonna go away. And all I'm saying in that video is your problems don't go away. You, you will always have problems in this life. As long as we walk this earth, we will have issues and problems. 
and it's just a matter of dealing with them. I dealt with mine. Of course, you know, it, when you get hit one after another after another, it's not going to put you in the best of moods. I had to do something so that it didn't affect me in some unreasonable way. It gets frustrating. So part of my income comes from work, consulting work that I do online. And so when I have a job lined up and it's 200 and some dollars and I've made an appointment to do it and the internet goes out, for me, that's kind of a serious thing because it not only will affect that job, but it can affect future jobs with that particular client. They're few and far between as it is. So, yeah, I was kind of bummed out that day, but no, I wasn't depressed. I wasn't going to go kill myself. And I wasn't just, I, I, used, I used that feeling to make a point for people coming here. Remember these videos are for people that are planning to come here. I want them to understand that it's not paradise on earth any more than Disney World is. Well, maybe Disney World is paradise on earth. But I got in a fight with my ex-wife at Disney World once too, so there's problems everywhere. Okay, let's go on to the next. Okay, here was one when I did the video where I just um, was walking through town and showing the street and I did a little uh, quick shopping. I grabbed the chicken and some vegetables and I think it came to $16. And um, so here was a comment on that right here. Buy this and that. Well, it's apparent you're not an experienced buyer outside of Super Maxi. Seeing that you spent $16 on $10 worth of stuff. But hey, not knocking it, just pointing out you can do better. You know, you want to appreciate certain comments, and this wasn't really a bad comment, but he doesn't get it. Does he know how much that chicken cost? The chicken was almost the cost of all of those things that I bought. And he doesn't know that. He does, I don't know how much the chicken weighed, but I know it was a big chicken it was like a small turkey and it cost about ten dollars so everything else I got there was six dollars more it was not expensive and it's not a matter of not knowing how to cost you go into a tienda you don't set the prices they set the prices this is not a negotiating tienda this is not a gringo price tienda what I pay everybody else pays this is a small town they don't have gringo pricing here as a matter of fact, most people don't even know what it is. Some of the taxi drivers know, but they don't know. The price is the price, and that's it. And when I first came here last year, I watched. I watched people shop. I saw what they were paying. And then I would go back and I would buy a couple things that were the same intentionally so I could see what was going on. It's all on the up and up. So you're telling me I don't know how to shop. I bought $10 worth of stuff. Tell it to the storekeeper. Hey, I'd, I'd be happy to pay $10 for that. But it costs $16. So, sorry, dude. Now, this little thread I'm putting up, because I don't want you to think that all I get is negative. As a matter of fact, I get very few negative. And, you know, I've been told a number of times, well, don't let it bother you. You know, just roll off it. There's trolls everywhere. Yeah, all that's true. But you know what? I'm a human being. And, of course... Sometimes they're just trying to be jerks, but I try to give people the benefit of the doubt and I take them seriously and sometimes they're hurtful. I'm sorry, I'm human, you know, they can be, it can be hurtful. That's life. Um, I'm not crying about it, but the, I address them, I write them back, unless they're just completely out of hand and then I just delete them so they can't even watch my videos anymore. So here I've got some nice comments. Beautiful city, Cuenca, Mister. I can wait. I can't wait to see the drone up in the sky of Hiron. That's apparently somebody that actually lives right here in town, a local that watches the videos. So that's nice. I actually um, okay. This one kind of cracked me up. Why is the sky never full blue in Cuenca? I'm a native Cuencano, naturalized in the United States. So in other words, you don't really live here. We've had a particularly rough year. It has been much colder and much rainier. I actually got in a, 
I, I can't really say an argument, but we discussed with, with my local friend Maria, who's lived in Cuenca her entire life, and so who am I to say? Except because I'm doing these videos and I have pictures, I have things to go back and look at. And I went back and looked at last year through the various months, and I have a lot of snapshots of what the weather and the temperature was. And it's much colder this year, and there were so many more rainy days this year than last year. Last year was pretty nice, and we had rain, but we had spots of rain, and it would be usually late in the afternoon or um, in the evening or maybe early in the morning. So when you went out, your daytime was bright and sunny and blue skies so much of the time. And this year, I swear it's 10 degrees colder. It rains a lot, although recently not so much, which is nice, but it's still been cold. It's unusual. You get that from time to time. If you look back historically over the, over the years, you get your cold years, you get your warm years, just like anywhere else. Today was a beautiful, sunshiny day. It's not that the sky is never blue. It's... It's blue a lot. It's just the first part of this year. It was just unusual weather. Okay, here was an interesting one. What one town was it that felt so good? Well, I don't remember saying it felt good, but the, when I was doing the video series of Paute, Gualseo, Chortaleg, I tried to get the Sig Sig, but that was in the series that I got called back and I ended up losing two or three days that uh, for some work that I need to be here for. So I had to cut that trip short. In the lead up of those videos, I made a comment about one of the towns that is, one, I think, one of the prettiest towns that I've seen in Ecuador, all the way from the north border to uh, south of Vicabamba. So that's what he's referring to. And the one that I'm talking about is Chortaleg. It's a beautiful, clean little town. I don't quite know how to describe it. It gives me almost the vibe of when you go to Aspen. It's, it's a bit upscale. Everything is very well maintained. Um, you don't see graffiti anywhere. The shops are very clean. They're bright. Uh, the layout is different. It has, a, it, has a different, it has a different take on the typical uh, Spanish colonial. It's very interesting. By the way, that's a town where you can buy silver and gold, various jewelry. Uh, there's a lot of craftsmen, artisans that are there that can make special design. And... Okay, this wasn't so much of a question, but it was a comment. It says, you move so far from Cuenca, and I live 25 minutes by bus. So he lives in Cuenca, and he's 25 minutes by bus to downtown El Centro. I live in Hiron. On a good day, it's 35 minutes. On a, on a bad day, it's maybe 45 minutes. I'm not that far. It's 36 kilometers. That's uh, 20 miles. I'm not that far. And I go in two, three times, one, two, three times, depending on the week, as it is. So there's nothing inhibiting me from going. And if I, when I lived in Cuenca, I actually didn't go to El Centro that much. I mean, you go there a couple times a month, and do you really need to go for any more, unless you're going to hit one of the restaurants? It's a nice place, but there's a lot of nice places. And I'm going to talk about one of the, I think, one of the nicest neighborhoods in Cuenca. If there was one place I want to live in the city, this might be it, and that's going to be in the next video. Okay, he says he's not so happy, he feels like he'd rather be in the center of El Centro. And so I think what's happened is he's probably, or she, I think it's a he, he's probably feeling a bit isolated. And if, with the thinking that if they're in El Centro, where things are kind of hopping, that um, you know life will be more exciting. Well, that could very well be. Um, and I realize that if you're living 25 minutes out, taking a taxi late at night can be problematic. And if you live there, 
uh, you don't have to worry so much about it. So that's all true. But I will also point out that El Centro isn't the only place where things are happening. Cali Larga isn't the only street. There are other places. You might want to look into that. Um, but that's, that's why it's important when you come here, you know, I say don't buy a house, you know, live here for a year. Because until you're actually in a place and you've been there for a while, you don't really know the shortcomings. You don't know what you don't know. You don't know what's going to bother you, what's going to get under your skin, what's going to not feel right. It feels right when you first get there, but what do you know? You don't know yet. So give it some time. If you're showing up here, don't even rent a place for a month or so. Get the feel of the area. Find out what's going on. What is of interest to you? And then look for places like that. Otherwise, you're going to get yourself locked into something and it's, you know, it's, you have to wait a year for a lease to end before you can move. So that could be a long year. Oh, one more thing I want to say on here. He says that he has his own furniture and so he thinks it'll be a bit difficult and costly when he moves. Um, I moved from Cuenca all the way out 20 miles to Hidon with a three bedroom house full of furniture with, with enough uh, living room furniture for two living rooms. I'd accumulated quite a bit. You know, the, the, my washer, the refrigerator, stove, all kinds of stuff. And it didn't even cost me $200 and there were, I don't remember, two, three, four movers and the driver uh, took care of everything. I, I packed the boxes, but they took care of everything with moving the TV, wrapped it up for me, brought it out here, put it in all the rooms, they set up the beds for me. Um, so a couple hundred dollars costly, well yeah, a couple hundred dollars, but you're not going to do it that often. And considering the amount of work they did, I thought, I thought it was a tremendous bargain. They did a really good job. Okay, this one again is from a regular viewer, Kathleen, and she said she had to laugh about the missed drone footage uh, comment at the end. Understand something on these videos. Um, a good portion, I, you know, I'm not really getting paid, so part of the payoff for me is they're, they're my entertainment, and so I humor myself. And I don't know how many of you realize it, but a number of my videos, after the credit, after the little guinea pig, sometimes I'll post things. So I, I think a lot of people don't see them. Um, a few of my regular viewers have caught on, and they're and they're they're catching, they're watching. Here she here she says she likes the kind of video that shows everyday life, exactly what it is I'm going through from day to day, places I go, things that I do. And thank you, I appreciate that. And I appreciate all the comments that you have left in the past. They're very wonderful, supportive. Um, it makes me feel like doing another video. Uh, so, uh, you know, thank you for that. There's so many different interests with different people. And so sometimes it's difficult for me to know exactly what is going to be more useful. For example, you know, we call these talking head videos where here I am, I'm just talking to the camera. They can be pretty dry unless you're really interested in, in the content. And then you have the ones where I'm not really in the video, I might be doing a voiceover and I'm showing a scenery or a, a place that I'm going. There's different types of videos and it's hard to know every, every type isn't for everyone. So that's all we have for today. Um, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed, I really appreciate it. I do have some Patreon subscribers and I want to thank you very much for that. It, it really helps with some of the cost. Um, and I'm going to put in the credit the, the last one, which was a pretty good size, pretty good size donation. I was, I woke up to that and I was a bit shocked, but thank you very much. It goes a long way to covering the cost of one of the cameras, so thank you. If you're not here yet, uh, maybe I'll see you when you come. Ciao. You know you could. Today was a beautiful...
beautiful sunshiny day. Let me see if I can say that again. Somebody that doesn't look like the back end of a dog like I do, 